Hello there, and welcome back to this Projects in Enterprise Java course. So today we will be continuing our first project, which is a voting system application done in Spring Boot. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how we can um, move forward with our application. All right, so first of all, we have here, um, uh, what? We have our dependencies with uh, our database. So let's go and actually configure our database first. So let's go and um, uncomment this, first of all. Okay, for some reason um, in, in Eclipse, when you're doing XML commenting, you know, you, when you do command slash, it, it comments things, but it doesn't uncomment them. So if you um, select a comment and then uncomment it, it'll just comment it again over the comment. So it's, you know, common, commonception. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and uncomment it. There we go. All right, and now we can go ahead and save this. Um, it didn't actually, it didn't actually uh, provide us with a logger. I, I, I thought it would do that, but it, but it, but it didn't, which is, which is weird. We'll have to put that in ourselves later on. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and actually right now set up our database. So first of all, we're going to go to our um, application properties, and this is a very useful file in Spring Boot. So you can pretty much configure almost everything in this file, including, but not limited to, of course, um, your database. So let's go and actually do that now. Of course, we don't actually have a database installed yet. Um, I can actually go in and open up a terminal here and check um, if I do MySQL. Um, as you can see, MySQL command not found. So again, as I said before in this course, this is a new user that I could create specifically for course creation. So it doesn't actually have anything, um, you know, programming wise installed. So let's, let's actually go ahead and install it together. So if you don't have it installed, you can skip through a little bit, but um, um, no, if you do have it installed, you can skip through a little bit, but if you don't, well, you can now install MySQL. All right, so um, let's get into this. All right, so in google.com, we're gonna go ahead and just type in uh, MySQL download. All right, there we go, MySQL community downloads, and I'm pretty sure MySQL is open source. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is open source. Yeah, open source database. Yeah, so it is open source, so it's free for everything pretty much. And we're just going to install MySQL. Where is this? Where is this? Community server. Um, oh yeah, by the way, there is a there is a um, there is a paid version. I'm pretty sure. Okay, there we go. And you can select your operating system here. You know, there I have everything. So Windows, Linux, Debian, Linux, Fedora, everything, any anything you could possibly have, it's it's covered pretty much. Um, all right, there we go. And now let's go ahead and download 10.12. This one right here. There we go. DMG archive. Um, again, on Windows, it's pretty much the same. Uh, begin your download. Just no, not right here. No thanks. Just start my download. It's actually been a while since I've downloaded MySQL, um, so I'm not, you know, particularly. Don't really remember all the fine details. All right, there we go. And now it's downloading. Let me go ahead and pause the recording and return to it once it is downloaded. Right, and there we go. It actually was installed. Let me go and actually open it up here. Um, there we go. Let's wait a second here for it to download. Any day now. There we go. All right, now let's click on the setup. So if you ever set up pretty much anything ever, um, this should all be pretty standard. Um, so this will take 1.18 gigabytes. That's a lot of space, but, you know, I mean, it, it, it is a database. Um, let's install it. Um, please don't try to guess my password now that you know that it's only a certain amount. Of, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, why would you even want to guess a password in if you were on a laptop? Um, if you don't know, okay, there we go. So um, it actually will create um, a temporary password um, root at localhost. Let me actually go ahead and screenshot this so that I don't, you know, so I don't lose it. Let's go, there we go. Screenshot it. Um, okay, and close. Let's move it to trash, and there we go. All right, so we're done now. And uh, now, back in terminal, um, we can actually go ahead and go to, let's, first of all, let's verify that MySQL is installed. We can actually do um, cd slash user slash local slash MySQL. This is just the, um, the place where it will automatically install MySQL, and if their directory exists, that means that we have installed it successfully. Um, and now we can actually start up MySQL and enter the enter the MySQL console, and by just doing 
um, from this CD, we would have to do, if you didn't CD into it, then you would have to put it before this. So we would do um, slash bin slash MySQL and then dash u root and then dash b and whoops, nope, that is the wrong thing. Um, what seems to be the problem? Let me actually go ahead and remove this bin here. This is weird. There we go. Um, I don't need the uh, you don't need the slash before the bin. And now here we're going to enter the password that we screenshotted earlier. Um, so I, I, I actually have it copied right now, so we can just paste it in. Now what I recommend you do is that actually you actually copy it and not screenshot it. Copy it and then put it into a text edit document and then save it. You can also change it afterwards, but just for now, go ahead and save it in a text edit document just so that you don't lose it or anything. So yeah. Um, so I copied it in. It, it, it doesn't actually show that I copied it in since, you know, just to protect the password itself. But uh, let's go ahead and actually press enter. And there we go. So we are now inside the MySQL monitor. So now we can actually do things like create databases. So let's go ahead and actually do that. We're going to do create database. Um, and this is going to be voting uh, system. Uh, voting system. And let's do like this. Whoops. Um, okay, so <laughs> I have to reset my password actually. Okay, let's do alter. Um, all right, so here, all we just do, uh, we do set password for root at localhost equals and then here you put in your actual password we do password and then inside here we would put the new password so let me go and actually do that right now okay, and there we go and then we say query okay zero rows affected one warning so there we go um i'm not actually going to show you the password just because you know i you never you never really know you never really know i don't know you maybe you might break into my house take my laptop Start up MySQL and then take a look at this database, which, you know, is available for everybody. Everybody, literally everybody can see it. But I mean, you never know. You never know. So, yeah. Okay. So now that, that re that's reset, we can actually do create database and um, voting system. All right. There we go. And now we can do use voting system. And there we go, database changed. So there we go. So now that we've done that, we've created our database, we've installed MySQL, and we've done quite a bit of stuff. So now we can actually go ahead and um, add this configuration into our Spring document. So that, that took quite a while. Um, so now inside application our properties, let's go ahead and actually do um, Spring dot uh, data source dot URL equals JDBC MySQL slash localhost slash and then voting systems. This is just the name of the database. There we go. Localhost voting system. All right. Um, now we're going to do um, spring dot data source dot URL, uh, no, whoops, not URL, it's going to be username equals, and then the username is going to be just going to be equal to root, and then uh, spring dot data source dot um, password equals, and uh, here you're actually going to set the password that we reset earlier, so the password that I didn't show you that I reset, you can now find it out, and surprise, surprise, drum roll please. It's not a password. I didn't set any password. So right now, the password is just nothing. So yeah, it's not password protected. I mean, it is password protected. The password is just you know nothing. All right. And so now, I mean, you're you're not you're not gonna you're gonna, you're not gonna steal my database, right? You're not gonna. I mean, I don't think you can, but you know, other than physically stealing my laptop or connecting to my internet, I'm pretty sure you won't be able to. So anyway, um, after that, we're gonna do spring. Dot data source. Dot driver class name equals com mysql jdbc driver and don't worry we're going to go over exactly what we're doing here in a second all right there we go so that's all we need to actually 
um, configure our database. So this is actually very good. So if we were to be doing this without Spring Boot, this would take so much longer. We would be here for a couple hours at least just configuring our database correctly. And it's actually very good that in Spring Boot, you, you know, you can just configure it just like this. So yeah, that's pretty good. Anyway, so what exactly is going on here? Uh, well, first of all, um, here we have data source URLs. This is just the URL of our database. So we have JDBC. Um, JDBC is, um, stands for Java Data. So J is Java, D is Data, B is Base, and then C is Connector. Java Database Connector. So JDBC, um, and we actually have it in our Maven file here. We have where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Spring Boot Starter JDBC. So this is the um, JDBC connector. Actually, no, actually, the connector is right here. Um, this is just a boot, boot that connects JDBC to it. Um, in this case, the corrector is right here. So this is MySQL connector. And what, what the MySQL connector does, it essentially, is it essentially allows us to access MySQL from Java. So it's like, I mean, it's the connector of Java in our database. So yeah, pretty simple stuff. Other languages like Python have connectors built in, but you know, um, Java does not, which isn't necessarily bad. It allows it for more dynamic database access, but you know, yeah. Anyway, um, so JDBC, MySQL, then we have the uh, where the um, database is hosted. In our case, it's actually just localhost. And then um, the database name. So in our case, remember how we created the database voting system? That's what we entered here. Then the username is the user that we're going to access it from. Root is the root user, so it has all the commands. Um, and then the password is just the password that we set for root user. In my case, it is nothing. And then finally, we have the data source driver class name. This is just the driver class name. So com, MySQL, JDBC, driver, pretty standard stuff. And now we're actually going to add one more, one last piece of, um, one last piece of, the database configuration puzzle. We're going to have spring, uh, spring dot JPA dot hibernate dot DDL auto equals create drop. All right, so we're back. Um, Okay, so it's been a while since I actually last recorded. Um, there was actually a quite a big leap there. Um, the problem was that I was getting this really weird error um, that it couldn't actually find um, Jack, the Jack speed dependency. This is actually just something that works with XML. Um, afterwards, after doing a lot of debugging and a lot of really frustration, quite a bit of frustration, it turned out that Java 9 was actually installed on my system. And even though um, the compiler level was set to 1.8, it was still using the Java 9's module system. And as a result, the module with JAXB installed wasn't actually um, there. So if you are using Java 9, in the future. So right now I wouldn't recommend it if you are using it in 2017 or the beginning of 2018. I still wouldn't recommend using it for learning Spring since it, that's one of the things that is sort of um, a little bit weird. Um, just, that's just an example. Over time that's going to get patched and there are going to be less uh, confusion. It's, there's going to be less confusion with a lot of this stuff. So you're, you may run into these types of problems. And so um, I would essentially highly recommend they use Java 8. So we can, you, can, you can actually, if you don't know, you can check what version of Java you have. You can just do terminal and then Java dash version. So in this case, I have 1.8, but I had 1.9 installed before. And even though the compiler was set to 1.8, the it was still using Java 9's module system. So in order to run this project on, or any, pretty much any Spring Boot, no, it's not a Spring Boot, Spring Data project on Java 9, you have to have this dependency in your pom.xml. So let me go and actually copy this in here. Um, all right, here we go. So this right here, um, com sun xml bind jaxb impl, 
2.3, you know, the version, of whatever you want. You can look it up, the latest version. So yeah, you have to have that um, in your palm.xml if you want to run any Spring Data project on um, Java 9. And I was getting a ton of weird exceptions with it, so it actually didn't see Hibernate. Um, it, it wanted to see Hibernate, even, and, and that was weird because usually Spring Boot Starter J Data JPA, it actually brings Hibernate along with it. So that was weird, and I thought, why does that happen? So if I, if we actually go here, Spring Boot Starter J Data JPA, in theory, let me see if it actually can see it here. No, we can't. We we can't see it here. If we open up this palm.xml in theory, it should be somewhere here. But I, I'm not entirely sure where exactly it is. But um. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, okay, so you can't actually see it here. It it it, it is there though, so, um, you know, you can trust me on this. Um, if uh, I, I can actually prove it to you. Let me go to now get the Hibernate Maven dependency. All right, here we are. And now if we go ahead and copy it in or paste it in um, and update the Maven project, you'll see here how we actually have a duplicate managed version 5.2.12 final for Hibernate Core. So it as Spring Data start, Spring Starter Data actually brings it along with us. So yeah, you know that's that's something. And maybe actually I was looking in the wrong place. It's, it, maybe it's here. Huh. There we go. Okay, Hibernate Commons annotations. There we have Hibernate JPA. There we go. So yeah. So essentially, yeah, it does it does pull Hibernate along with it. So it's uh, when you put do Spring Starter. So yeah. So then I was wondering. That's a very very weird. Um, that's a very weird exception. Since I mean, why why can't it, the exception it was throwing is what that it can't find Hibernate Entity Manager. So I would paste an Entity Manager, and that exception would be gone. But then it would give me another exception, and it was just a whole whole mess of this mess of stuff. So that was that was difficult to deal with, but yeah. So essentially, um, that's one of the reasons why I didn't actually decide to use Java nine for this project. Stupidly, of course, I said no. We're gonna use Java eight because I mean it's it's much more stable and much more you know supported as of now. And then um, went ahead and um, loaded a Java nine on my system just because reasons. Anyway. So yeah, so essentially um, that's the thing. Um, so use use Java 8 for now. And I mean, really, um, the whole point of this course is to sort of teach you how to program in Spring. It's really not going to change all that much. All that's going to change is the very, um, you know, t tedious details that, you know, just are generally going to be changed anyway. So yeah. Anyway, so now that we've got um, that understood, let's go and actually go back to our application.properties file. So we have our data source set up. So JDBC MySQL localhost test. Username root, password none, uh, MySQL JDBC driver. Then we also have create drop as the Hibernate DDL. So DDL stands for data definition language. And essentially what this means is that it will um, automatically take our, um, how can I say this? Take our um, JPA architecture. So let's say that we create a JPA class or entity, and we're going to see exactly how we do that in a second here. Um, let's say that we create an entity um, that isn't located in our database. So usually, if we didn't have DDL, it would just give, an, give us an error. So it can't find that table. So it tries to select it, and it can't find it. Thanks to def DDL, on the other hand, it actually allows us to, um, it just automatically creates the table according to how we specified it. So anyway, let's go and actually run this now. Just to see exactly how it works. Let's give it a second here. Spring Boot usually takes uh, a little bit of time to uh, start up. All right, and there we go. All right, so let me actually make this a little bit smaller so you can see. All right, I think that's about it. All right, there we go. Okay, so you'll see here how it actually um, sort of creates our um, application. So it does everything. So it initializes JPA Entity Manager Factory for persistent unit default. So this is essentially it's initializing our Entity Manager Factory, and we're going to see exactly what Entity Manager Factory does in a second here. And essentially, it just does a lot of different things here. So here, it's essentially starting um, the embedded Tomcat container for the most part. 
Um, and then here it's actually starting the JPA container and doing all the Hibernate things here until it gets to here where it does uh, the controller. So it maps controllers as well. And then finally, it just um, maps in the data source and um, this is essentially just web. After the uh, after um, the database setup, it actually goes the web setup. So yeah, there we go. So this actually took a long time to get here with before. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's one of the reasons why I'm not using Java 1.9 for this project because it would just um, overcomplicate things and it's not really well well thought through yet. Yeah, okay, so either way, um, that's all for this lesson. Um, no thing for homework today again, so this is the third lesson with nothing for homework. Um, just essentially implement what we already did here today. Um, next time, we're actually gonna have homework. Um, you're actually gonna be creating your very own entity in, or, or, or yeah, entity, JPA entity. So yeah, anyway, without further ado then, um, I wish you luck implementing this on your own. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Till soon.